Picture this, a dimly lit room, the gentle glow of the silver screen illuminating eager faces. It's 1936, and a sense of anticipation hangs in the air. The projector whirs to life, and there it is, my man Godfrey. A film that has stood the test of time, inviting laughter, tears, and contemplation in its wake. As the story unfolds, the peculiar yet endearing character of Godfrey Park, brought to life by the impeccable William Powell, graces the screen. The eccentric tale of a forgotten man rescued from the debris of the Great Depression by the enigmatic Bullock sisters takes unexpected turns, blending comedy and social commentary in an unparalleled symphony. Perhaps you remember that scene, Godfrey's quiet demeanor in contrast to the chaotic world around him, or the witty repartee that dances through every frame. As the laughter echoed in that darkened theater, something stirred within you, a connection, a reflection on the human condition, or maybe just the sheer joy of being transported into another world. But let's not stop there. Beyond the cinematic magic lies a trove of intriguing tidbits. Did you know that the film's director, Gregory Lacava, encouraged improvisation, resulting in spontaneous moments that now feel like precious gems frozen in time? And Carol Lombard's portrayal of Irene Bullock was so masterfully executed that it cemented her as a comedic icon. So, as we delve into the lesser-known facets of this beloved classic, let's unravel the threads that compose its rich tapestry, the stories behind the scenes, the trivia that adds depth to every line and gesture. From the auditions that shaped the cast to the delightful mishaps that happened on set, each factoid is a brushstroke on the canvas of film history. Remember that first encounter with my man Godfrey. The emotions it stirred, the moments it etched in your memory. It's more than a movie, it's a journey through laughter and reflection. A time capsule of an era that continues to resonate. So, join me as we explore the hidden nooks of this cinematic gem, bringing its brilliance into the spotlight once again. And now, without further ado, let's lift the curtain on the captivating anecdotes that weave together the story of my man Godfrey. Get ready to be enthralled, surprised, and enlightened. After all, who doesn't love a good story about the stories behind the story? Sibling dynamics defied by age in My Man Godfrey in the classic 1936 film My Man Godfrey. The portrayal of sibling rivalry takes an intriguing turn as Gail Patrick and Carol Lombard step into the roles of Cornelia and Irene, two sisters at odds. What's captivating, though, is the age twist behind the scenes. Gail Patrick, who embodied the older sister Cornelia, was, in fact, almost three years junior to Carol Lombard, cast as the younger Irene. This casting paradox adds a layer of complexity to their on-screen dynamic, proving that age is more than just a number. The film's production also saw its fair share of dramatic moments. A clash of creative visions between star William Powell and director Gregory Lacava led to a unique resolution. Over a bottle of scotch in Powell's dressing room, the two hashed out their differences. But the following day, it was Lacava who bore the brunt of the spirit's effects, nursing a pounding headache, a missing element. Powell himself, who sent a telegram cryptically stating, we may have found Godfrey last night, but we lost Powell. See you tomorrow. Such anecdotes peel back the curtain on the camaraderie and complexities that shaped this iconic film. But my man Godfrey was more than just an on-set drama. It was birthed during a tumultuous period for Universal Studios. The studio was reeling from the fallout of the expensive flop Sutter's Gold and pinning its hopes on the success of Showboat, which would go on to cause production woes and studio upheaval. Amid this uncertainty, my man Godfrey emerged as a relatively economical project, made for under $700,000. While its success couldn't salvage Universal's fate, it did contribute to a pivot in the studio's fortunes, marking a transitional phase in its cinematic journey. As celluloid history unveils, My Man Godfrey offers not only a witty narrative on screen, but also a tale of intertwined destinies and backstage dynamics that shaped its creation. With age-defying casting, scotch-fueled compromises, and the studio's existential challenges, this 1936 gem remains a testament to the multifaceted nature of Hollywood's golden age. Oscar snubs and unconventional ad-libs, untold stories of my man Godfrey in the annals of Hollywood history. The 1936 classic My Man Godfrey shines not only for its witty plot, but also for a web of captivating anecdotes that have lingered through time. As the only film to boast Oscar nominations for directing, writing, 
and all four acting categories without clinching the coveted Best Picture nod. Its trailblazing path remains unparalleled. The film, directed by Gregory Lacava, showcased the brilliance of Carol Lombard and William Powell, yet it curiously missed out on top honors. The duo's on-screen magic was, however, accompanied by off-screen challenges. Lombard's penchant for spicing up dialogues with unscripted expletives posed a peculiar hurdle. A perfectionist to the core, this led to numerous retakes of scenes, but the end result was a film that encapsulated the zest of unscripted banter. Delving further into the film's lore, we uncover the use of a stand-in during the iconic staircase scene where Powell's character carries Lombard's over his shoulder. Chick Collins took on this role, ensuring a seamless portrayal that added to the film's allure. My Man Godfrey remains a testament to the intricacies of filmmaking, the allure of untamed creativity, and the whims of award season politics. A trailblazer in its own right, its journey still resonates with the dynamics of today's cinema landscape. William Powell's proposal, real life parallels in My Man Godfrey and the glitz of Hollywood's golden era, where romances bloomed and faded like the city lights. The 1936 film My Man Godfrey found a unique link to reality. Starring the once married duo of William Powell and Carol Lombard, the film's narrative echoed their own past. Powell, a suave leading man, proposed his ex-wife Lombard for the movie's lead role, drawing a striking parallel between their on-screen characters and their real-life relationship. Despite their divorce three years prior, Powell saw no one but Lombard in the role of Irene. In a move that stirred the film industry's gossip mills, Powell emphasized that the dynamics portrayed between Godfrey and Irene resonated deeply with their own history. The story of a forgotten man and a free-spirited socialite mirrored their past, subtly weaving their personal journey into the fabric of the film. The echoes of their shared history were hard to ignore. Howell's endorsement of Lombard raised eyebrows, yet it also brought a captivating layer of authenticity to the film. The chemistry that had ignited their relationship years ago once again set the screen ablaze, as they portrayed characters entangled in a complex dance of emotions. My Man Godfrey became more than just a film. It was a cinematic reflection of a past love that had endured and evolved. Howell's bold suggestion showcased a different kind of artistry, one that merged fiction with the remnants of reality. As audiences watched Godfrey and Irene's story unfold on screen, they unwittingly glimpsed a chapter of Powell and Lombard's own history, forever etched into the annals of Hollywood lore. In a world where love and fame often collide, my man Godfrey stood as a testament to the intricate connections between life and art, past and present. A story within a story, a real mirroring reality, forever united by the silver screen. And so, the three-letter seabird with an R in the middle, an urn, parallels a tale of two Hollywood icons whose my man Godfrey journey echoed far beyond the confines of the set. David Niven's dual role in My Man Godfrey transcends decades in a serendipitous twist. The 1936 cinematic gem My Man Godfrey has left an indelible mark on both the silver screen and the airwaves. When the film's charm was adapted for the radio waves on May 9, 1938, courtesy of the Lux Radio Theater, the dashing David Niven took on the mantle of Tommy Gray. Little did anyone anticipate that Niven's journey would come full circle, as he later headlined the 1957 remake of the very movie that catapulted him into the auditory realm. It was a seamless transition that showcased Niven's versatile prowess as an actor. This iconic film, a beacon of classic Hollywood sophistication, secured its rightful spot in the annals of cinematic history when it was selected for preservation by the National Film Registry in 1999. The United States Library of Congress hailed My Man Godfrey as culturally significant, recognizing its enduring impact on generations of film enthusiasts. The movie's enduring charm and social commentary continue to resonate, making it a touchstone for understanding the bygone era that birthed it. A particularly intriguing tidbit intertwines the film's narrative with a real-world location. As the character Irene so casually mentions that the Bullock family resides at 1011 Fifth, the reference is not just a product of fiction. This address, 1011 Fifth Avenue, is where the illustrious Metropolitan Museum of Art now stands, a nod to the film's knack for embedding subtle connections to the world beyond the screen. 
In retrospect, my man Godfrey emerges as a nexus of interconnected moments, where David Niven's star shone on multiple fronts, where preservation solidified its cultural significance, and where artful storytelling brushed against the city's landmarks. This film is a testament to the enduring power of cinema, where characters and stories continue to reverberate long after the credits roll. In a tale that spans mediums and generations, my man Godfrey captures hearts, preserves legacies, and artfully weaves the past into the present, proof that even in the fast-paced tapestry of time, some stories remain eternally relevant. As the curtains draw to a close on our cinematic journey through the enchanting 1936 classic, My Man Godfrey, we find ourselves not just witnesses to a story, but companions to a timeless experience. The film's intricate dance between comedy and social commentary has cast a spell that transcends the confines of the screen, touching the fibers of our emotions and intellect. With each laughter-laden scene and every poignant exchange, we've embarked on a voyage into a bygone era, where the elegance of black and white has painted a canvas of wit and wisdom. The characters, like old friends, beckon us to reflect on the societal quirks that still whisper in today's world, reminding us that amidst change, some human idiosyncrasies remain as constants. But our journey doesn't end here, it merely takes a new form. As you mull over the moments that left an indelible mark on your heart, take a moment to reminisce and share. Whether it's a stolen line that now defines your humor or a subtle nod to the film's underlying messages that have stirred your contemplations, your thoughts enrich the ongoing legacy of my man Godfrey. As we bid adieu to this cinematic treasure, I extend my heartfelt gratitude to you for indulging in this shared exploration. Your time, your interest, and your connection to this classic reinforce the power of storytelling to bridge generations. So, let your memories flow, your reflections flourish, and your connection with my man Godfrey thrive on. Thank you for being part of this journey.